she was a fugitive to the police. A sensation to the media. And a symbol of courage to young people everywhere to fight for what's right. The Legend of Billie Jean, directed by Matthew Robbins, featuring Pat Benatar's hit song, Invincible, rated PG-13. Starts Friday at a theater near you. Welcome to Dorking Out. My name is Sonia Mansfield, and we will be invincible. Nobody wants me. This this is terrible. Joining me is my podcasting sister from another mister, the co-host of Dorking Out, Margot D. Hello, my friend. Hello, my friend. How did you miss Fair is Fair? That was yours for the taking. I was leaving it for you because I thought if I did Fair is Fair, then you'd be like, what a bitch for claiming the line for herself. It's your show. I figured it was... (laughs) Only fair is fair, and fair was me thinking that you should have that. That was awesome of you. And uh, I also like the chick who plays Ophelia. Yes. Is that her name? When uh, Peter Coyote says, where is she? She's just everywhere. Everywhere. (laughs) The accents are so good. We are dorking out about 1985's The Legend of Billie Jean, which has been requested multiple times. So we are finally, finally doing it. It is written by Lawrence Connor and Mark Rosenthal, who've actually written, they wrote Jewel of the Nile. Not good. Um, Not good. Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. I'm like, it's fine. And then Mona Lisa Smile. Oh, God. We have to talk about that one. And then built it in my neighborhood. Oh, did they? Okay. Yeah. And this is directed by Matthew Robbins, and it stars Helen Slater. Adorable. Adorable. Everybody drink. She looks beautiful in this movie. She's breathtaking. Yes. Keith Gordon, Christian Slater, Peter Coyote, Yardley Smith, and Martha Gaiman, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, as That's Ophelia, who we were talking okay. about. And then uh, Barry Tubb, who plays Hubie. Yep. Uh, Hello, Barry Tubb. Yes. He's Wolfman from Top Gun. And then uh, Dean Stockwell shows up ah oh, stockwell always good always happy to see dean stockwell coyote and stockwell always happy to see them <laughs> i would watch that show coyote and stockwell oh, man they're <laughs> cops <laughs> they're that's all you need actually they're cops all right <laughs> i'm into it did you see this in the theater I did see this. In so the did I. I most definitely did because we wanted to see movies with teenagers, right? So that's why it, we saw it. It was a teenager. She was a lead. It was the Pat Benatar song. I'm a big Pat, Pat Benatar yeah. fan. Yeah. I loved the video. I loved her look. Very 80s. Very, it was updated for her. Yeah. It's the song kicks ass. I have to say, I had a lot of people say on my personal Facebook page that I, I post, I don't always post what we're doing, yeah. but this is one where I did. I got so much engagement because so many people, dudes were like, that sucks. And so many women were like, fuck you. Yeah. You must hate strong women. Fuck off. This is the best movie. Ever. You know what? I think this movie has aged pretty well, actually. Like, yeah. You could tell it's directed by a man. For sure. <laughs> there's, a, there's a couple of choices, but I'm nitpicking. I think yeah. it's fun. The actually, let me rephrase that a little bit. The message of the movie has held up very well. Is what yeah. I'm, what I'm trying to get at. Um, if you haven't seen The Legend of Billie Jean, you should stop what you're doing right now and go rent it. Because yeah, every anything you're doing. Yes, you're driving to work. Go home. Go home. Go Just home. take <laughs> take a sick day. Watch The Legend of Billie Jean. <laughs> and now we're gonna go through it. So the movie opens with. Helen Slater looking just fucking beautiful through the whole thing. Just gorgeous the whole time. And her little brother is played by Christian Slater, who in researching for this episode, I finally discovered they're not related, even though there's. (laughs) He said that uh, he thought they were destined to get married because they had the same last name. Isn't that cute? Cute. That is very cute. And they are out, like, riding on his scooter, his, like, moped or whatever, and they're being harassed by these local boys. And they're just local yokels. these local yokels. It's Cletus, the slack John <laughs> yokel. It's Hubie, played by Barry Tubb. He's such a brick. 
He's yeah. such a prick. Um, and they just, these local boys are just following them around and harassing them. Um, first of all, because she's, you know, it's a whole like, boys will be boys, you know, right. kind of thing. But like, they go swimming in a lake. You could tell, like you said, the movie's directed by a man because she, it just, the camera just lingers on her. She's in her underwear. Like, She's not wearing a bra she's not, yeah. clearly in a few scenes there. She's in a very tight little, but I guess that's part of it also is the objectification of Billie Jean. Yes. Like everybody sees her as this Twinkie, like she's the sex object. Yes. And she's actually much tougher than that. And they live in uh, Corpus Christi, yes. right? It's Texas. So yeah. they live in this trailer park by the water and it looks fun. I would actually, <laughs> I was like, I could live there. They had a cat walking around. They got like a, you know, you can hang on the porch. I'm like, Sonia can be over there. I'll be over here. Oh my gosh, <laughs> we should do that. Let's just do that. Oh, life goals. Okay. Yeah. So, the, but they, so they're, the, the first thing there, and I thought like, is he taking her to work or something? Cause that's what I thought, mate. But they were just out for a ride because it's really, yeah. really hot. And I guess they were looking to cool down. So they like go out, they get milkshakes, they run into the local boys again who, you know, harass him. Uh, and th- harass her like they're yeah you know taking pic- just taking pictures of her yeah, like, what the fuck that guy he's like creeps. taking pictures of her without like her consent like a total asshole some things never change and then they the two of them go swimming and like a lake or whatever and this is when we get like underwear shots and all that stuff and the boys show up again and they take christian slater's scooter and they ride off with it and you can tell you you know that like Billie Jean and her brother Binks his name is Binks um they don't have money the scooter was clearly like a luxury item that, yeah like, you know he it was like having a car for me when I was a kid I yeah. had a second hand car my first car and it was a big deal you know and so these these assholes steal a scooter and he goes to get it back and they trash the scooter and they beat the shit out of Binks just i mean it's because yeah because they're pricks so billy jean and well actually i guess all well first billy jean ophelia and putter <laughs> played by yardley smith the names here yeah oh my god they they try to do the right thing which is they go to the police station they report it stolen to peter coyote as the cop and he doesn't do shit about it he gives them the old boys will be boys and you're a pretty girl you know, kind yeah, get used to it. Yeah, get used to it. This is they'll steal your shit and beat up your brother because they want to fuck you or whatever. And she's like, that sucks. So she goes to Hubie. Uh, his father runs like a shop, you know, some sort of mart in the town. And she asks for the six hundred and eight dollars. A lot of money in 1985. Yeah, for the it is she has a written estimate of how much it would cost to get the scooter fixed, and of course, like you know, Hubie's like fuck off, and I think she, it's one of the like multiple times Hubie gets need in the dick, like <laughs> not enough, but not yes. enough. <laughs> she needs him in the dick, and then here comes Hubie's like shitty dad, and shitty dad's like. I'll give you your money. Come upstairs and I'll get the money. And because he's a shitty monster, he tries to rape her. And that's when Binks and Ophelia show up and he takes a gun from Hubie's like register. Right. He's good. He first he's going to open up the register just to get the cash. Yeah. Like laying right on top is the gun. So he's 15. He's like, ooh, a toy. And he starts playing around with it. And then they hear Billie Jean being assaulted. And so they're like screaming, like, where are you? Come out. And she's trying to run away. And he, Binks winds up, Binksy, Binks, yeah, Binks, <laughs> Binks. Yeah, is that your friend's name? That's your friend's name. I'm all Beegsy. You're thinking Beegs. of Beegsy. Yeah, Beegs no. and Binks. Sorry. So, so B- I'm gonna get them mixed up because now I see sh- I see her and I and don't then see there's Christian Binksy Slater. and then there's Binksy from Fun Size Podcast. Yeah, there's Binksy. That's where it all is. They're all like <laughs> melting in my brain. Okay, and they're all blondes. Like they're all like melting in my brain. Okay. So anyway, so he shoots the dad. Yeah, in the shoulder. In the shoulder, 
could have aimed lower, but okay. Yeah. And he shoots him in the shoulder, and then they're like, what the fuck? We got to go. So they leave, and then they're pretty, they learn pretty quickly that the cops are coming to get them. And Billy Jean's, and she's like, look, let's tell the cops what's happening. They'll understand. And her brother's like, no, they won't. And no. we're going to be in a shitload of trouble. And so I guess it's summertime when all this happens. Yeah, because nobody's school. in school. Right. So Yardley Smith is playing like they say 14. Like, what's the point? Just make her 18 or 19. Like, why does she? I, I, I guess she's they, clearly not either. Yeah. They make her like 14 so that they can have. I don't even know if she's 14 because then they like make there's the thing later where she like gets her period in the middle of a car. <laughs> and I was like, is that the wow. only reason they made her the age that she is because the actress is in her 20s at this point yes and she was like in the stephen king truck movie maximum oh yeah yeah. where she was uh, played a newlywed so it was like it's like i it's an odd choice but i look i love her and i love her voice i love everything about her i'm into it but so she and ophelia and i love ophelia in this movie she's She's real good and i love her clothes i love like she's so like my style icon is this (laughs) So I'm like, what up. else did she do? I'm looking it up. It's oh, she's, she's good. In, she was in the Flamingo Kid, the <gasps> movie FX. She was in the movie Threesome, which I think is on our list, and then A Kiss Before Dying. Oh, she's in some good movies. Oh my god, she's the daughter of Estelle Parsons. We just talked about Estelle Parsons. <gasps> oh my god, yesterday in Bonnie and Clyde. Yes. In case you're wondering. Oh my god, and Roseanne. I think she played Dan's mother. Yes. I okay. think you were right. Anyway, wow, there you wow. go. That's Ophelia. Wow, Nepo baby. So she's good, but I like her. She's <laughs> yeah. she's awesome. But they take off on the road, and they're in like a shitty car, Corpus Christi, Texas. I like the the um the the throughout all the, the everything throughout the movie is done over the radio yes. because especially in '85, like you did just listen to the one radio station, yeah. or everybody had a station they listened to, and they had some loyalty to it, and it was like a Z100, yes, or KT, I think in SF or everybody, you know, they have like their thing. Yeah. So, so he's like announcing like, oh, Billy Jean's on the run. And so she's on, so she's on the run and the cops are like, they're armed and dangerous. So they're making a big deal. And they're also just kids. And so they want to make an example of them, right. I guess. Yes. So, so all the cops are and like, it's Gene Stockwell. Like what's his job? He is the district attorney. But we had at this point, we haven't met him. So there's a whole thing where like they're on the run, which, by the way, they're on the run for almost the entire movie, but they never seem to get anywhere. They're like they never like Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah, they don't go. They don't go very far. (laughs) Like they (laughs) They have so much gas. (laughs) Yeah, they camp out like they like spend the night in like an abandoned like mini golf course and then. The next night, I think they're driving around like a, a nice neighborhood. They find like a house that they think is empty and they break in and the house is not empty. It has Keith Gordon in it. And he's like the. <laughs> don't you hate when that happens? I hate when that happens. And, and he's <laughs> I, don't, totally, I don't, by the way, I like him. Very yeah. Much. And he's totally like not afraid that these people are in the house. He's not remotely disturbed by it. In fact, he really likes them. He wants to fuck Billy Jean. He's totally okay with this and he's like the weird film kid that you probably knew in high school you know that's like super in av yeah he's like super into video and movies and horror stuff and uh they all hang out and he convinces them to well first she make she cut they watch joan of arc she cuts her hair she then they make like a a video that they're gonna give to all the news stations with their like side of the story Manifesto. yes <laughs> and because at this point like they are like they're in all the newspapers they're all they're talking about on the radio and like all these crimes are happening all around and they're getting the blame for it when they didn't do it oh my god i totally no. missed a whole we skipped a whole part where there's like there's an attempt for her to like she's gonna turn herself in um, but she really wants that six hundred and eight dollars because it's the point of the matter. Fair is fair, right? Fair is fair. She right. wants the money for the scooter, and so she arranges for a uh, drop off at the mall. 
So I think that's the mall they used in Logan's Run, by the way. I could be wrong. I suspect this is used in a lot of movies. Cause, yeah, that's what I think, too. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so there's this whole thing where, like, they're in the mall and the the evil shitty dad is there and he he doesn't even want to give her her money. Like, and he, at this point, is like, he's fully making money off of the situation. Like, he's selling, he's like... selling merch. He's selling merch, like, of the girl that he tried to rape. And, he, like, he's the... the re- Him and his shitty son are the reason all of this happened. And he's, like, cashing in and just being, like... You know, they shot me and now you want me to pay them? It's like, you tried to rape her, you fucking monster, but whatever. You know, and the cop, Peter Coyote, like, is the one that's actually going to pay. Like, he, like, gets his own money to, like, pay her just because he wants to make it right so bad. Because he feels like an asshole, as he probably should, for not doing something in the first place. And so there's a whole thing at the mall where, like... Again, like she's trying to like get her money and here comes Hubie and she knees him in the dick again. <laughs> Drink every time Hubie gets kneed in the dick. And you'd be trashed by the end of this movie. They don't do that enough in movies anymore. That yeah. was a real go to for a while there. Yeah, I'm fine with it. it. I am too. Yeah. And she runs through the mall to escape. Um, she does some real home alone shit where she drops like marbles and everybody slips and, um, and the kids are, the kids in the mall are like, they're into it. Like they think she's rad. The the kids like believe her right away. That's yes. the whole point is like, it's the, it's the kids versus the squares versus yes. the adults. And so instantly, like she goes to a gas station and they have no fucking money and they can't afford it. And they all, of course, they're teenagers. They buy junk food at the yeah. place. But that one of the kids there is like, oh, just put it on my tab. My dad owns the station. What else can I do for you? Do you need anything yeah. else? Like everywhere they go, someone's there. But as soon as the tape gets out, because it's Helen Slater and she's fucking awesome. Uh, that's a, yeah, it's ridiculous how like gorgeous she is. With- she's so sexy and gorgeous yes. and cool. And especially because the 80s, and this is what I, I had to think of. Like, oh, right, because 80s was hair. Like, yes. Big hair. In the eighties, not yeah. a lot of people had a close, close crop. No, cut. No, so for someone to do that was really cool. I thought, like, yes. That's, that's really, but I mean, when you're insanely beautiful, like she is, <laughs> yeah, it's she could be a pharaoh. What she's doing, yeah, she could have any hair. She could have no hair. It doesn't matter. She'd be bald like and people would still fall all over themselves. Yeah, she's yeah. beautiful. She's but absolutely she, gorgeous. But the kids are always with her. So wherever they go, they have somebody. That's like that they kind of swoops in and lends the money yes. or gets them some food or whatever. And Keith Gordon is like their captive and his dad is Dean Stockwell, right? Yes. That's so right. He's going to run for district attorney. So he wants this all squashed because he doesn't, he doesn't want his son involved. Yes. And he doesn't want, and, and the whole time, by the way, uh, Binky, I can't, I can't figure his name now. <laughs> it's, it's Christian Slater. Binks. It's like Binks. He wants to go to Vermont because there's a nudie girl on his wall at his house and a poster. Well, yeah, he has this Vermont. Yeah, Vermont. He <laughs> has this idea that because it's so hot in Texas, so like he has. And the, it is. I've yes, been there. He has this vision in his head, like Vermont is cold. Vermont has snow. It's clean. The air is clean. Like. He has this vision of Vermont as some sort of like winter paradise. So he's constantly like, "Can we just go to Vermont? Let's go to Vermont." That's like and a repeat. They're like, thing. "Yeah," and it's like, "Yeah, it's like a thousand miles away." Like, can we please? St- like, we have no money. Like, we have to think about yeah what we're doing. But eventually, because the game is just, it's just they're getting more and more popular. She's in USA Today, which is like a signifier. Yes, like this is a nationwide story. She yeah, and she. She makes the videotape and I guess, you know, they send it to all the news stations. I don't know how they do that, but they deliver one to the police station with like a five-year-old who walks up and he's like, (laughs) no parents, nothing, (laughs) just walking around with a videotape. And he's like, hi, I have video. Like, and he just like hand, like just walks into a police station and like hands over. I'm not even joking. He's like five years old. No, he's little. And he hands over a videotape and it's like. 
LOL. Like just some, hey, p- cops, maybe you could find that kid's parents while you're <laughs> like doing These something. cops don't like, do shit. They don't do shit. They think every girl with a short haircut is Billy G. <laughs> like, they're resting. Yeah, they're up just resting short hair girls. But yes. they're but there's a whole thing where the they're at one point where Billy Jean is surrounded by kids and they're like, hey, this kid at this house needs your help. So Billy Jean walks to the house and all the kids start following her down the street. You know, that movie trope. And, yes. and then there's a kid being beaten by his father. And so she goes in there and somehow convinces him. Yeah, she comes out with the kids like, yeah. he's going to be with his grandmother now. But he goes, yay! I'm yay, like, Billy Jean! Right. And then, of course, there's some redneck Peckerwood who's in his <laughs> truck. With his gun his rack. Girlfriend. Yeah, with a gun rack. It's Texas, you know. And I get it. The hunters and shit, whatever. But he's like with his gun rack and he's and his girlfriend's like, oh, my God, it's Billy Jean. Pull over. I want to see her. I want to see her. I want to see her. He's like, that's Billy Jean. Hang on. And he just leans out of the car, blasts the shit out of their <laughs> windows of their yeah. car. Because there's like a, what, $500 reward? Yeah, there's, there's a- like a, there's, yeah, some sort of reward for her capture. But it's not like dead or alive, you asshole. Like, right. It's not I- the old west. Like- <laughs> he tells her, like, I'm just going to blow out a tire. <laughs> like, he blows out the window and yes. the front and the windshield and he's just being a dick and so they so they have all these these problems at one point she's driving in a car with like a bunch of other billy jean types with yes. her and they're taking her to like this underground place where she's just started this movement and the movement is fair is fair <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I guess. yeah she she they all kind of separate at one point like i think Ophelia and Putter are with the police now at this point, like Billie Jean and like Keith Gordon get into an argument and Binks is running around doing I don't know what. And so Billie Jean for like, you know, the entire length of the song Invincible by Pat Benatar is going from like Billie Jean lookalike to the next lookalike. Like she's hopping on motorcycles and then getting out and getting in cars and they're driving around. By the way, again, never seems to leave leave Corpus Christi. Christy like no they never go anywhere eventually she just ends up back at the mini golf course which is where she was at the beginning of the movie it but, doesn't make any no. sense no because the cops are now saying like they they stole and they have a gun and they're kidnapping the son and yes. there's they're all really young um there's so then they they do get picked up eventually like the gang and there's the scene where Yardley Smith is slapped by her mother, and apparently the woman slapped her in real life, Damn. Like, really hard. Like shit. Yeah. That's when she cuts her hair off. But she said she wouldn't cut her hair off, so she wore a wig. I'm like, yeah, it looks like it you looks wore. like a wig. <laughs> it looks like a wig, hun. Yeah, and we and that's when we get the you know where is Billy Jean everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> and at the very so at the very end they're on the beach. At this point. The DJ is on the beach with them like, yeah, Billy Jean's coming and they're going to have this whole thing where there's going to be a trade off. She's going to turn herself in. They're going to get the gun. They're going to give her, give them the scooter. Yes. Like all burnished up and uh, and the money. I don't know if it's but it's like they're all they're going to return. They're going to bring that all in. And then is it Dean Stockwell who also brings in like the yeah Dean Stockwell the brings in the, brings yeah in brings like in the, like these sharpshooters the and <laughs> right and here comes Peter Coyote is like what the fuck it, Peter Coyote's performance in this movie reminds me a little bit of Harvey Keitel and Thelma and Louise where it's like yeah that's he his job. he believes that Billy Jean and her friends have gotten the shaft and he's he's trying to wrong. He's trying to right a wrong, but things are just constantly getting out of his, out of control. Like, yeah. And he can't anticipate what these, these kids are going to do next, which by the way, they're not doing all the crimes that people are accusing them. And then when they do take things, they leave these like really cute IOU notes everywhere. <laughs> like we I'm owe you. we talkie Sorry. Yeah. We that and some batteries, but we'll, we'll pay you back. Like, promise. They're like not bad kids by any means, but yes, the Dean Stockwell character brings in the sharpshooters and um, Christian Slater puts on a dress and dresses as Billie Jean to, and walks in with Keith Gordon. And then here comes Hubie, fucking Hubie, who's like, that's not Billie Jean. <laughs> and I think 
Uh, that's when Binks gets shot in the shoulder, and at some point Hubie gets kneed in the fucking dick again because again <laughs> he you can't do it enough to Hubie. It, you can't. He, yeah. And he so Binks gets taken away in an ambulance, and Billy Jean finally confronts Mister Shitty Dad at his merchandise stand, which is so again so fucking gross, like. And who are his vendors? He gets that really quick. <laughs> Seriously. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, he tried to rape this girl. And then he's like, now he's selling, like, pictures of her and shirts and hats. And, you know, he's got all this merch of this girl that he tried to rape. And she confronts him and, like, tells the truth. And then even Hubie's like, my dad's a loser. And, like, he leaves, you know. And then... She needs shitty dad in the dick. <laughs> it's like father, like son. <laughs> right. It just needs to be done. And they, and then they, they, the kids are like, there's a bonfire. Yeah. And then the kids are like, well, let's throw our merch in the bonfire. Cause this, and I like that air must stink, but it's like all these shirts and hats yes. and everything. And what happens? So the, she walks up to Peter Coyote and he doesn't do anything. And, then she runs up to Keith Gordon and she kisses him and she like runs off. And then we see like fire and like the big giant, like uh paper mache Billy Jean is burning. Cause she's Joan of Arc and get, uh, it. get it in case you don't get it. <laughs> and then it cuts to like Vermont and you know, there's Binks going, you said it was cold, but I know it was this cold. And then he sees a snowmobile and he's like, hey, <laughs> and then it's like freeze frame. And I will always love you. We will be invincible. You hear that song like five times in the yeah. movie. And it's a good song. That's that's plenty. I'm, I'm fine with that. But yes. yeah, that's the whole story. You also like, get just... Rebel Yell in there by Billy Idol, which oh, is and I love that song. That's a good song. That's a good Billy Idol song. So, yeah, that's the story. It's it's just it's a MTV video come to life. Like a lot of movies started becoming because yeah. they, they made money. I, I don't know if this made money. I don't know if this was a hit I or not. Don't think this movie made money. So, no, it made three million dollars. It's one of those things that a few years later, yes, it, I, it was on TBS. Yes. <laughs> and all the time, because there's literally, except for like, I don't think there's any swear words. Is there? It's like PG-13. Uh, I think there's like, at one point, someone says fucker. But yeah, it's, I think it's rated PG-13. So yeah, it's pretty clean. Um, yeah. I mean, she's almost topless just for those who want to see it, see her like that, but at the top of the show, at the top of the movie, but it's an easy movie to digest. Like you could have this on with a bunch of commercials in between scenes yeah. and it just all seems to flow. It just, it, I, it, yeah. yeah, the movie didn't make, she was not a big star at this point. Like, I mean, maybe Supergirl had come out at this point, but I think it's funny that we watched this because I had just watched The Goonies with my son last week. And I think people were cool with like kids on bikes. Yeah. Ri you know, riding around solving mysteries or whatever. And The Legend of Billie Jean is not that. I think actually this movie might have done a little better if it had come out around the same time as this like a Heather's or something where we started to get like teenage stuff that was a little edgier. Yeah. I guess I think it would have maybe clicked because there weren't movies like there wasn't a movie like this with like a female lead where I don't this movie's not like and it's not a comedy. It's it's kind of a it's a fucked up movie. This dude tries to rape her and she goes on the run and becomes like super famous and it's not a feel good movie in that way. It does have the end though, you know, with the invincible and like, woo, you know, that sort of thing, but it's not that kind of movie. It's not road warrior, I mean, it's... <laughs> but it's not. Yes. It's not road warrior either. It's, it's in a weird of, middle ground. It is, you know, there, we were talking about Bonnie and Clyde on the other show we work on. 
um, that, yeah, they're on the run, but these people are definitely not murderous assholes. No. They're innocent. And I think there's I, some people get really, my dad could never take any plot where somebody innocent was being chased by yeah. somebody that just annoyed the, sh- that just like bugged the hell out of him. Um, it just gave Machida. It just like made him anxious. But uh, I think, I mean, look, the writing isn't great here. There's no. a lot of plot holes. It's there. Sure. They could, they could, it could be better directed. It could be, there's, there's a lot of parts that sort of like, they, they could add more to it and it would make it a little more cohesive. Yeah. It could have used more humor. It could have, but I don't know. I kind of love it. It's just this silly little. I think it's film. super watchable. Yeah. Because I, the yeah. cast is game. They're, they yeah, the they, they seem very aware of the movie they are making and like the accents or something there's something yeah. they're a thing they're a thing in this movie and like again like helen slater i'm gonna look it up because i don't know if supergirl was before or after this like she is you she's know. like she had a, oh supergirl like was right before this like the year before. right and it didn't and it didn't do well like they had they they it took a while for them to release it because they had yeah. a lot of issues with it. And then she did The Secret of My Success. Yes, which is also not good, but made it no. so much fucking money. What, what, was the, what, is, what else was she in? Ruthless Case. People. That's right. That's why we just saw her. Yes. She's great in Ruthless People. Yeah. She had a good run there. She yeah. was in, she was very popular. She's, she's underappreciated. A, yeah, I, I agree. Because I, I think she's she could do comedy. Yeah. She could do drama. Um, she's a great action star. She looked great in yeah. this movie. You know what else she's in? Um, I'm looking at the list here. She's in City Slickers. I isn't, love City Slickers. Yeah, isn't she? She Now I'm trying to remember. She's the woman who is also writing with them, right? Yeah, she, yeah. her friend ditches her yeah, at the last right. minute to go on the vacation. And then they make, they set it up that she and Daniel Stern will have a relationship. Oh, that's right. Okay. I I've seen to, that movie a uh, hundred times. And I need more. to rewatch it because I really liked it, and I like Bruno Kirby very much. And and Yardley Smith is in there too. Oh, <gasps> that's right. Mm-hmm. It's a Billy Jean reunion. It is a Billy Jean reunion. We need, <laughs> yeah. I, Slater needs to show yeah. up. Yeah, Coyote. I like this movie. I yeah, I do too. I I I don't. I don't think it's a great movie no. in that. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say like pay top dollar for this, but it's fun. I think it's fun. And like I said, I think in 1985, we just didn't get a movie like this for that was geared towards young people, but also with a female lead. I think. The female lead was the selling point for yeah, me. Yeah. And then the, the song. <laughs> Pat Benatar is always a selling point for me. Always. She's forever. Best. Yeah. Do you want to hear about the other movies that came out the same time as The Legend of Billie Jean? Of course I do. Okay. This came out in July 1985. So also that month, Back to the Future. One of the best movies ever. Yeah. A perfect movie. Yeah. Red Sonia. Oh, Red Sonia. I get it. Uh, I have so many people who've called me Red Sonia over the years. Uh, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. We don't need another <laughs> hero. Dun, dun. Yeah, yeah. This is competing with that 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 audience. Yes, so. I I um I love that song. <laughs> I love Tina yeah. Turner so much. Uh, Silverado. That's a good movie. I haven't seen it in a long time. I though. haven't seen it in a long time either, and I remember really liking it. I like westerns. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Explorers. Yeah, that's also is that Christian Slater? No, that's uh, River Phoenix. I think is yeah, one of them, River right? Phoenix, See, that's R. the kind K. of movie that like normally starred young people, explorers, yeah. Goonies, yeah, you know, that kind of shit. Uh, Day of the Dead, yeah, mm-hmm. no, not your jam. The nope. Man with One Red Shoe, not good, not good. <laughs> I remember not, wanting to like it so I bad. I wanted to love it, and it I could not. I think he, Tom Hanks is like coming off of Splash, I think, and Splash is so good, 
and like really you want to love the man with one red shoe and you're like oh boy it's a mess <laughs> yes uh the black cauldron i don't even know what that that's is that's a disney animated movie that nobody oh, talks about the... yeah not a good one uh the heavenly kid do you remember the heavenly kid oh yeah oh my god that's the kid who's the guy who dies as a greaser and then yes. he comes back to life in the 80s. Yes. Oh, God. I do so, know that movie. So many ghost movies in the 80s. Right? <laughs> so many ghost movies. It Body was switching movies yes. and ghost movies. Yeah. Uh, last two movies. Kiss of the Spider Woman. I haven't seen that in a very long time. It's a weird flick. Yeah, it's super weird. And then the last one is National Lampoon's European Vacation. <laughs> I haven't seen that in a long time, but I remember enjoying it. Uh, I mean, if you compare it to the original Vacation, you're probably in for a disappointment. But yeah, it's got some laughs. I always remember, hey, kids, look, Big Ben, Parliament. <laughs> That's all I remember <laughs> from that movie. <laughs> They're just stuck in the roundabout. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't I go left? I can't go left. <laughs> Are you, are you ready for the top 10? Yes. So this movie comes out middle of July 1985. So this is the top 10 songs in the U.S. that week. Number 10, Cindy Lauper, The Goonies Are Good Enough. I really like that song. Yeah. I love Cindy Lauper. Uh, number nine, Bruce Springsteen, Glory Days. Dude, you couldn't get away from that album, Born in the yeah. USA. Uh this is a great song. Number eight, Tilt Tuesday, Voices Carry. <gasps> I was just listening to that song yesterday. I love it. Uh, number seven, Whitney Houston, You've Got Good Love. You Give Good Love. Sorry. She was a star. She was such a star. Number six, Paul Young, Every Time You Go Away. Such a, like, eighth grade slow dance song. Oh. Uh, uh, Arrhythmics, Would I Lie to You. I love good that song. song. Love I it. Love rhythmics. Number four, here's a makeout song. Survivor, the search is over. <laughs> Such a makeout song. I mean, I I assume that's what other people were doing, not me. <laughs> uh, Number three, Prince and the Revolution, Raspberry Beret. <gasps> so good. The song, I fucking love this song. Okay. Number two, Phil Collins, Susudio. I was all love in Phil on Phil Collins back in I'm the a, day. I'm, I'm all okay with Phil Collins. This like, was, you can't shit on Phil Collins no, around me. No, this was no jacket required Phil Collins. I if, love face value. Yeah. There's a, a bunch of them, yeah. And then number one, Duran Duran, A View to a Kill. A View to a Kill. I love Such I, a good song. The song's the best thing about that movie. Well, actually, the movie has Grace Jones. I, yeah, I think that movie's kind of fun. It's not... It's one of the middling Bond films, but I find it watchable. You know what? I think a lot of people our age, that was their first Bond. Like, they probably, yeah. it was on TBS, like, every fucking weekend, you watched A View to a Kill. It was on all the time. It's it's at Paris. It's, you know, the Eiffel Tower. Whatever. Yeah, I'll put it on the list for us. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. What did I do? Uh, what else are you dorking out about, my friend? Well, I'm uh, all obsessed. If this is going to really date the show, but I'm a, uh, I'm really obsessed with the Alec Murdaugh trial. I and... started the documentary yesterday. Ooh, so the, this guy is a fucking asshole. I mean, first the Netflix documentary is great. I mean, it is very focused on the victims yeah. and that how. And there's been other documentaries, by the way. There's like ABC has one, mm -hmm. Peacock has one. I think everybody has one. So it's an it. In America, and this is in the low country, which is South Carolina by the water, there's this family that basically ran the town law wise for a hundred years, like four generations. And so they were like crazy. the attorney general, and they were like the AG, and they were defense lawyers. So they made money off of uh, lawsuits. It's just holy shit yeah. how much power these people had. And this, the guy that's being accused of it, Alec Murdaugh, it's, uh, he's just, he gives gingers a bad name. But just <laughs> not a great redhead. No. Uh, not a good redhead. No, he's he, a prick. He's a huge prick in there. And he says that 
A, he says that he's been accused of, sh- he's on trial for shooting his wife and son on their property that's yeah. like not easy to get to. Mm-hmm. There's all, but he's also been accused and admits to ripping off people millions and millions of dollars in lawsuits. I mean, one of them being the housekeeper that worked at their home. Um, she slipped on their stairs fucking dies she has one of her kids is like she has three sons one of them is special needs like she was their sole support she so he encourages them soothe us we'll get money from the landscape i don't know whatever they got the money from right. but he kept millions of dollars from people and they just list one so after the other up. after the other and then his son was involved in a boat crash that kills a girl and he has three times the limit for alcohol it's and it bananas it's bananas how much power these people have and then i was saying to sonia like this week like i'm trying to write things and i have it on my fucking phone this guy being on on trial and i got like i gotta stop but uh yeah he's a he's a big piece of shit it's a big trial here in america and the documentary at least i've i've watched the first episode on netflix so i'm quite behind on on the trial, I, I know that it's happening and I'm seeing the headlines and stuff like that. But the amount of times that they have like bailed that kid out of trouble. It's very typical. It's so typical. Rich kids. I mean, they just I knew kids who like crashed their cars and they got another one. Their parents don't want to be you. Can, look, if you are in the one percent or if you're in the top five percent, you could buy justice. You could buy yeah. It'll you make can your, buy your way out of things. It'll make your blood boil, and it will also yeah. make you understand the legend of Billie Jean and why yeah, they go on fair. the run. <laughs> but there, but there's also like this: the other son they're saying had um, was possibly a homosexual, bisexual. But there's a gay kid that's killed. I don't know if you got to that part yeah, yet. No, I haven't gotten there yet. But Ugh. there's so much. There's so, so much, much to, and there's so much about white privilege here mm-hmm. and the good old boy South. And the the prejudice against people and who don't have money and what the basic yeah. white men get away with <sighs> is just much less those that have money. It's going to make me or, so angry. It's so uh, anyway. So that's the that's bit what I've been working out about. But I also watched on. I don't know if you've seen this on Hulu. It's called. It's actually a Showtime production. It's called The Twelfth Victim. Ooh no. So this is, we talked about this on What a Creep. That's our other show if we keep referring to. Um, we talked about Charlie Starkweather. I, Charles, Charles Starkweather. Yes. And his girlfriend slash kidnapped person that he took with him yes. on the run. Uh, her name was Carolyn Fugate. And basically this is a documentary that's, oh. I think, finally correcting things and making people realize, like, she was a child. You know, no, she wasn't a ninth grader that was really into murder right. and kill sprays. Like, she really was damaged, and this guy, like, terrorized her. It's interesting. It's it's a long, there's, like, four parts to okay. it. But, uh, you know, because I did that, that last year, yeah, I did that yeah. show, so I was, like, I was really into it. Um, on the, uh, on YouTube, I'm into, uh, there's the Law and Crime Network that does the Alec yeah, uh, Murdaugh trial. So you could see him on the stand. Oh, he has an oxycotton habit, and he says like he was taking oh, sixty pills a day. Damn, like, I know. And then there's also something I love. I'm really into this. It's I'm into vocal coaches that go through performances of, Ooh, of people. With- and there's this one called Wings of Pegasus, and it's this British guy. I'm sorry, I don't know his name. He's He's just Wings of Pegasus guy. But he, he has a YouTube channel and he'll take a vocal performance like Queen at Live Aid or Karen Carpenter mm-hmm. or uh, anybody modern or in the past. And he just goes through their vocal performance and what they're doing to achieve what they achieve. And I just find it really interesting. And he's just he's just very positive. Like he's really open in his tastes and what he and it's I just and I just find yeah. singers really I envy people who could sing well. I just think it's it's I, such a I wish I could amazing sing. Amazing talent. Yeah. I wish and I could I, sing and dance. All those things. And I want to I actually I want to take a minute and thank people um yes. who've left us five star reviews oh, on yes. working out. So there's Kay Boris, Montana seven oh six, Sarah from Boston, Rose Lily Violet, and Lena Lady. 
Thank um, you. Thank you all for leaving us five star reviews. It helps us find our people. Super appreciate that. That's nice of you. I know Apple doesn't make it easy. So thank they you. They don't. So we appreciate it. Um, anything else on your list? I was just going to say Wet Leg. I talked about them a while ago. Yes. That fucking album is so great. I listen to it all the time. They're just so cool. Anyway, all right. That's, it. that's a good one. Are you going to be listening to the Coldest Case in Laramie podcast when it drops next week? No, tell me about it. That's the new production from Serial. And it's a reporter who goes back to Laramie, Wyoming to talk to people about a murder that happened of a young girl there. Well, not young girl, sorry, a teenager, a teenage young lady um, in 1985. And oh, 85 again. Yeah. So the just the like small trailer they put on the serial feed i was like oh yeah uh-huh <laughs> like, i'll be listening to that so i've been to laramie wyoming so really yeah a long time ago um vacation or uh no i had my first boyfriend ever went to automotive school in laramie <laughs> wyoming and i Wait. this is a true story I spent six weeks in Laramie, Wyoming, and lived with him in his trailer. I'm I was blowing my mind. I was like nineteen. Yeah. Did you like it? No. Ah. <laughs> I hated it there, and I hated him. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do all day? I watched this. Y'all prepare to be real impressed. Um, I watched soap operas. Yeah. I uh, walked around a lot. I made friends with the pregnant lady who lived in the trailer across from us. And she taught me how to make fried chicken. Um, I was. That seems worth it to me. Very, very lonely. And Aww. like. It was not a good scene. I'll just say that. Uh, I stayed for six weeks. I was. I always had planned to stay six weeks. That wasn't like, oh, after six weeks I left. It was just like a little like a little trip during the summer to visit him there. And the whole time I was like, what am I doing? Like, I don't even like this dude anymore. What am I doing? So anyway, I've been You're to Laramie. My mind. You are blowing my <laughs> that's why you really want to watch this because you know the area. I do. And it's very um it is it's a strange area because it's it's Wyoming. And by the way, there's areas of it's it's very flat and there's like if you like that sort of thing it's very pretty like you know open fields and all that shit that people like i don't like that stuff but whatever um but there's also a college there so like there's like younger people there but i was dating a guy who was going to the automotive school thank you very much <laughs> what is he doing at automotive school i don't know was, this. Don't was like them? it was like one of those like tech you know what it wasn't tech i don't know why uh, it's like you know like a wyoming technical institute where you learn to work on cars and but he went to the one in wyoming i don't know why because probably because he was like really wanted to be super country and whatever uh, that's when sonia still liked to date dudes that were like her dad and then i learned a valuable lesson yeah don't you don't date your dad <laughs> So, you yeah, you won't fix it. You know what? You, you know, it's so funny. You're like, you're blowing my mind. This story always blows people's minds when they remember. I can't. Yeah. Wow. Because it's like the opposite of what I would do. Like Sonia in Wyoming is not something that should happen. It's just sure. It's but you learn how to make fried chicken, which is a very important <laughs> skill. I think this is true. And you know what? She was very nice. Um, but. I was very out of place there. Let's just say that. We've all felt out of place. So true. We, we can all empathize. Yeah. So I will be listening to that. Um, a few things on my list. I watched. Oh, right. I watched Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. Have you watched this? Mm -mm. It is. Um, it's written by uh, Dean Flesher Camp and Jenny Slate and Nick Paley. And it's based on the little shorts they used to do. And it's like a shell, like a seashell. And and he's got like a 
you know, big eye and he wears shoes and he just, it's like stop motion animation. Um, it might be the sweetest movie I've seen in years. Like, it's just, it's fucking sweet. It's just like such a good heart movie about like a shell that finds the, the guy is like staying in an Airbnb and meets a shell that's like fucking living in the house with her grandmother and the voices. Uh, Isabella Rossellini is the grandmother and Jenny Slate is Marcel and he just films them and he puts it on YouTube and she like he, sorry, Marcel becomes famous and that makes him want to find like the rest of his family. And it's, I'm not doing it justice, but it's like very, very sweet and funny and a very easy watch. It's it's a delight. It's a delight. I, okay. re- I highly recommend. And then I also saw After Sun, which is nominated for a couple of Oscars, and I needed to get scratched off my list. And that one is real sad. So um, it's not it's not for you, Margot, right now. Okay. Okay. Um, but Thank you. there's a. It's set in like the 90s and like an 11 year old girl goes on a trip with her dad and she's remembering this trip and she's remembering pieces of that she didn't think about when she was little and now looking back as an adult and seeing that her dad was not in a good space. It's sad. Who's in it? Um, It stars Paul Mescal. And he's nominated for Best Actor for this movie. And mm-hmm. it, it's really good. It's a good movie. It's just, it's really sad. And it has stayed with me. And I I watched it like less than a week ago, but it's still like just hit, like sitting in the back of my brain. And I'm like, this movie's really sad. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, li- I like when movies do that. Sure. I, I you know. It's amazing that somebody can create something that makes you feel and like you can, I I don't know. It's, but it's, it's, it's very well done. And I think maybe you might like to watch it later. I'll just say that. And then the last thing I need to talk about is my sister came over for our, like, I don't know, almost monthly at this point, uh, gathering where we order burritos and watch reality TV and we decided to start season 10 of Below Deck. <laughs> because I was, I've been dying to have somebody to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, because Margot loves Below Deck. And I was like, well, the new season of Love is Blind hasn't started. So let's watch Below Deck. <laughs> and I think we watched about three episodes. And I was like, fuck this show and fuck Margot for making me want to watch Below Deck. And now I will be watching the rest of this season. Um, but... <laughs> It is, it's just so fucking watchable and how every episode ends with you going, shit, I need I to watch, what happens. I need to watch the next one. Now, normally I assume you have to wait a week to watch the next one, but I'm behind so I can just go right on to the next thing. And it's really hard to stop watching it. Yeah. Um, these people, they all just like, they work they're shitty to each other (laughs) they drink too much when they're off and i guess hook up it looks like some people actually fully hook up in this one yeah judging by the coming soon previews i've seen which did not happen in the season i watched i don't think anybody really hooked up um so i'm i see why you like it so much and i was asking you a lot of questions before we started recording which was yeah i wanted to know why we weren't seeing like a, an episode where it's like, hey, we took all the real housewives of New Jersey and we put them on below deck for a crossover it, and you were explaining it to me. Yeah. So the thing with Bravo is they they farm out to different production companies their shows. And uh, Andy Cohen used to be in charge of production. He he now hosts watch what happens live and I'm, he still has his fingerprints on some shows, but he's somebody that like, he loves real housewives. I think he likes Vanderpump rules. There's a summer house. He really likes below deck is not his under his umbrella. 
Got it. It's not something he ever pitched. It's just, so he, we, pe- people are below deck fans. We, below deck has better ratings than any of the housewife shows. Can I, I, so my sister has also been watching, I, she's been watching one of the other below deck incarnations because there's mm-hmm. a couple of them. And she said that while her, her partner, her man will not watch real housewives with her, he will watch below deck. And I'm yeah. like, is there is part of the reason the ratings are high for Below Deck because maybe it clicks more with men and women as opposed to just Real Housewives seems to mainly click with women and gay men, whereas yeah, Below no, Deck, it has, yeah, it's uh, Steven Soderbergh is a huge fan. Roxanne Gay is a huge fan. Um, uh, Seth Rogen is a huge fan. <laughs> There's like, yeah, you know, you meet your other fans because yeah. they, and they all have their favorite captains and their least favorite. There's so this is a, it's a show about basically a crew on a something. There's a sailing yacht. There yeah. are yacht. There um, there's luxury yachts and they're in different locations. There's below deck med. There's one that, that was adventure that was up in Norway, which is a different production company. It was kind of weird, but I was still into it. And then there's one in Australia with a super hot. OK, that's, uh, captain. that's the season I watched. Yeah. And it's like it's it's travel log, it's food because they always have a chef on the show mm-hmm. and some of the chefs are really good. It's about guests, some of them are great, some of them are assholes. It's about working with other people. Yes. And all these people, it's like being on a spaceship. Like they're stuck with each other. Even when you have your <laughs> downtime. It's not like it is, if you think about yeah. it. You can't, you know, like that when they're when they're not working, it's like they're just in these little cabins. Yeah. So you don't really get to decompress or anything. So anything that bugs you about somebody like the first week by like the tenth week, you're gonna go like ah I'm gonna push you off this boat. I'm gonna push you off this boat. Right. And the different captains of the ships, they all have a different management style. And that's always interesting to me too, like how people solve problems with the crew. Some like people call Captain Sandy, who's gonna come up as Captain Creeper because she seems to follow everyone in the interior crew oh. around. Like she'll follow the chef and she'll follow the people like, Oh, what are you making? Uh-huh. They said they wanted this. Are you sure you're gonna bring them that? Uh-huh. Like she loves okay. the deck crew. Right. So everyone's a different. So Captain Lee's been on the shows. I didn't watch in the first couple of years. I got I got on a couple of years in, but he was he's more gruff and old fashioned. And this season, he just says that this guy's a peck of wood. (laughs) I swear to God, every five minutes he's going, God damn it. (laughs) God damn it. (laughs) He's great. And there there was a season a few years ago where there were a couple of deckhands that were just drunken. The head Kate Chastain was the, the, was the chief steward. Oh God damn it. What's her title? God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. But anyway, I guess everyone talks about her, but she's like the lead deck stew is the one that like tells the interior crew, yeah. which is like the, all the people that keep the boat, everything clean and get them the drinks and stuff like that. They interact with the guests the most. Yes. And there was a season like Captain Lee is much more hands off. Like if you come to him with a problem, he'll help you with it. But he likes to let people just manage their own teams. Right. Whereas Sandy is much more of a micromanager and she just doesn't always get it right what she's seeing. Mm -hmm. And she could apply her energy in other places, I would just say very gently to her if I met her. Um, But yeah, it's all that mixed together and we all get into it. And it's like I said, like it's travel. Mm -hmm. You just see these beautiful locations. Sometimes you get guests that are just amazing and fun. Sometimes they're just the ones they have this past week, which you haven't seen yet, is a bunch of women in their 40s and 50s who are pageant queens. Oh, it's for pageants you've never heard of. And they show up like all wearing their gear and their crowns and their sashes. And one of them's a huge asshole. And it's just fun. Wow. It's just like watching people. And I was saying to you, so so Andy doesn't have any control over it. So he doesn't really do a great job. He like Case Jastain. But other than that, like he doesn't know who the people are. Mm. And he doesn't do a great job with the reunion episodes. He does okay. a terrible job with them. When he's checked out, like he was with Salt Lake City reunion, yeah, it's kind of painful to watch him because he just can't fake it. Yeah, he seems he's not phony, an actor. But, 
No, no. And people, I think he's kind of a, just kind of a jovial doofus, like <laughs> in his life. But when he doesn't like something, it completely short circuits him. His brain just kind of goes. Um, so anyway, that's the whole thing with Below Deck. It gets huge ratings. And it's super some, entertaining. I get but it. But it's entertaining. It's like I'm making, I don't, it's like under, like at, without commercials, it's like 40 minutes, but you could just have it on. Yeah. And it, it doesn't stress you out. I mean, occasionally they have shit happen. Uh, but I was just, I keep alluding to the fact a few years ago in Below Deck, I think it was season seven. They had a, they had a crew that basically like assaulted Kate Chastain. I remember you talking about this. Yes. And Andy did such a bad job. Like after that, kind of there's this uproar. And so then they've been much better about keeping people safe. Um, but anyway, yeah, yeah it's, it's just, I, there's also a show called Galley Talk where there's former people from former boats and they watch the current season and they just kind of goof on it and they dice it. And it's interesting because these people really know what happens on the yacht. I think I know what happens, but when they say like, oh yeah, she should have done that better. They should have, that was a really good job. I'm like, oh, that helps me yeah, in understanding it. But I just, yeah, it, does, it doesn't make me want to take a sailing yacht anywhere, but I kind of feel oh, like no. I have. <laughs> uh, I couldn't do any of these boat things i would vomit everywhere yeah so you you get you get you get boat sick i do i get very very seasick seasick. i get very car sick if i sit in the back seat i'm super fun at parties is what i'm saying Uh i'm (laughs) such a good time so i get to live vicariously through below deck these locations yeah. what's what's crazy i love to be by the water too like i would i would love to be on a boat but i would throw up everywhere and that's nobody wants that nobody wants that yeah but it's, this, it's so entertaining yeah you get it you're getting really great captain lee this season i mean he leaves because he has to have hip surgery and yeah. it's painful to watch him because he's in, he can't walk yeah well that we keep like i keep watching with like my hands over my face where i'm just like don't i'm like are you okay like <laughs> He's such a good, and I love it. He, did you see the one where he was like, it was the, the doctors from the ER? Yeah. And he had dinner with them. And yes. just He he has a lot of warmth to him. Like for yeah. all that gruffness, he's actually a really nice guy. Yeah. He, I got a I cameo think, from him once. It was like one of the best kiss ever. Yeah. It, it, it comes across that like. Yeah. That he seems like a, like a good boss too like in that yeah in that he trusts people to do what you hire them to do and right i haven't seen other seasons so i don't know but i imagine he would step in if shit was going wrong yeah he he does okay and he and he does so he's he's good but it's interesting because then they bring in sandy who's like a whole other management style yes and uh fraser like has a complete meltdown under her it's great (laughs) it's really fun to watch (laughs) rachel's really great the chef they have this season she is so good it's saying like the you know she refers to the stinky fish as like deadliest snatch and then yes. she's like, there's like a truffle kerfuffle or whatever. Like, she's like, the way she names things, I was like, does she name every one of these episodes? Because she's really good at it. <laughs> she's really charming. She was on America's Next Top Model like a long time ago. Oh. Yeah. She, I used to watch she, that. I wonder. Me too. I, I used to I love it. That, I used to love it too. Yeah. The first couple of seasons and then it got yeah. kind of boring. Yeah. I, they're not going to be top models. I mean, this is. No, but I but I did used to love it. Now, um, RuPaul's Drag Race really scratches that itch for me. So yeah. I, I watch RuPaul's Drag Race and then I watch their like behind the scenes untucked uh, little half hour special that's on afterwards. And I love RuPaul's Drag Race. Like, I it's just pure joy to me. And you learn, I feel like I learned so much about, well, about like, what it's like to be a drag queen, but also just how they all lean into what they're good at. Like, yeah. Cause they're all different. They all have different talents. There's different kinds of drag. There's like pageant drag. And then there's like this season in particular, there's a lot of like almost like Instagram, TikTok drag. And then like these kind of like old school performed in clubs drag and they're clashing with these very different styles, but they all have things that they're super good at, or they have like their drag personas and it's like taking the same challenge. They're all doing the same challenge, but they 
lean into like their personas and approach it from such different ways that I don't know. I find it very inspiring. It reminds me to think. I think about stuff like that when I'm at work now where I'm just like, yeah, I should lean into like what I'm really good at and just do it that way. And I, I fucking love RuPaul's Drag Race. It's so good. No, it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's, it's, Below Deck is not as convivial. I mean, they, there's some tension. But when they get along, it's fun, too. Yeah. They, there's, like, two deckhands that look exactly alike. And they even joke about it on the show. Like, they look like they could be twins. Are you talking about the blondes? Ben, or, ben and, to- ben oh, and ben Tony. Oh, Ben and Tony. Ben and Tony. They I was like, are you changed. talking about the redheads? I was like, because no. there's, like, two redheads. We have, like, the two blondes. We have the two dudes, Tony and Ben and and you're getting into soon, yeah. by the way, if you stick with it. Yeah. There's the whole Camille versus Alyssa. Yeah, that's already. Ooh. Yeah. I. It's so interesting, too, because there's this like. I, I'm. We're not that far into it, but like Alyssa is clearly someone that's like, when I don't like you, I'm going to take your man. Yeah. And she like go like. I'm mad at you, so I'm going to flirt with the dude that you like. And I'm all, ew, that's icky. And but, Camille's a real. And she's a piece of work, too. Yeah. There's also a lot of, like, I'm a cool girl. Like, I like nachos and football and blowjobs. And bleh. and you're like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you're no Billy Jean. Yeah, you're no Billy Jean. <laughs> anyway, I'll continue to watch Below Deck because... It's fucking addicting, man. There's a reason why, by the way, I don't start below decks because they're addicting. <laughs> but now I always like... end it with, you know, stay tuned for next week. And do you watch it on the Bravo app on Hulu? No, I've been watching it on Peacock. Oh, OK. Yeah. If you get the Bravo app, you can get galley talk. And then it has like those episodes and they have like behind the scenes and addiction. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's my crack. But that, the other night, I'm not last night. Excuse me. I'm like at nine oh one. I'm like, where's Galley talk? It should be <laughs> up now. Where's my Galley talk? I'm just gonna put on below deck and play my Dreamlight Valley on my Switch. That's all I need in the whole world. Everything's fine. It, yeah, it's this was so this is so good. So thanks for the below deck wreck. That is uh, gonna be a problem. <laughs> it's 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 pure selfishness on my part because I just want somebody to talk about it with. Well, I got you. Yeah. Awesome. My, my friend, where can people find you on the internet? So on Twitter, you can find me at Brooklyn Margo, M-A-R-G-O. On Instagram, I'm at Brooklyn Fit Chick. Um, my site is brooklynfitchick.com. And then I'm getting better on the TikTok doing videos and shit. And that's at my name, Margo Donahue. You are getting very good at it. And Margot's book, Filmed in Brooklyn, is wherever you get your books. Get it. Yeah. Get, get it. it. You can find me at thesoniashow.com and the Sonia Show on Twitter and Instagram and the TikTok. If you like Dorking Out Show and you want to give us a couple of stars on your podcasting service of choice, that would be delightful. You can also find all of our episodes at dorkingoutshow.com. And we are also on Twitter and Facebook. And I will, I keep saying I'm going to be better, but we'll see <laughs> about posting this <laughs> stuff on social media. You should be following me and Margot. That's where you'll get right. the most activity. So, but this was really fun. I'm super grateful to our listeners who have been asking for this one for a while and super grateful to Margot for being like, yeah, it's time to do Billie Jean. Oh, I and you just you were like I'm just about to ask if you want to do this. No, episode. it was it so was weird, Margot. It was so weird. I was literally in our like dorking out ideas, and I was like, I wonder if she would do Legend of Billie Jean. And then she texted me and asked, "Should we do the Legend of Billie Jean?" And I was like, "What?" <laughs> we had a Helen Slater moment. We did. We, we did. did at the same time. I was just looking through our Google Doc. I'm like, yeah, "What should we do next?" There you go. It was the Legend of Billie Jean. Yeah, send us your recs, please. We really appreciate it. And uh, if you like our voices, follow us at What a Creep. We talk about creeps from the past to the present. Have a good old time there. We do. We have a really good time. So please join us. And until next time, uh, oh, I almost ended it like we were What a Creep. Uh, Just, you know, be safe. Wash your hands. Watch The Legend of (laughs) Billie Jean. (laughs) 